Hello everybody and welcome back to uh, Analog Vernacular. Today we're going to be playing some Rogue Trader. Um, we have managed to take out the Commissar, so the Commissar and um, that guy, the Slith guy, um, are dead. Well, they're not dead because I wasn't able to kill a Commissar because I picked the wrong dialogue choice apparently. Um, we need to talk to everybody here. We currently have. See if they give us any more leads and then maybe we're just supposed to go back and kiss the boots of weird guy? I don't know. I'm at a loss. Mirazai Azraesh stares down at you from his formidable height, his head slightly tilted to one side. The lean wiry Xenos is encased in black armor, not even a sliver of a gap has been left between the tightly fitted plates, which bristle with mutely gleaming barbs and hooks. Set in a white face, striated with crimson tattoos, dark eyes devour you, burning with predatory malevolent interest. I want to know what happened before you took me to Komara. You want to know how and to what end I orchestrated all of this? Ask your questions. Why did you kidnap me? When Irimaris ordered us to lay waste to the monkey settlements, Tazara and I encountered resistance. I have hunted your kin too long not to notice how well you in particular were fending off our attacks. The rout in Tazara's arena, the appearance at the plundered vessel. Your kind are usually powerless against us, but not on that occasion. I began to suspect that you could not have managed it without outside help. Help from our side. I began sending out spies and assassins. My eyes and ears infiltrated your vessel, your cities, and they discovered a trail that led back to one of your worlds. A trail that ended with a burned monkey, the source of the information about where and when my cabal was going to strike. A little trickery to draw you away from the planet. And I had your little informant in my grasp. Okay, so the burned guy is, um, um, why can't I remember anybody's name right now? Um, Achilles Scalander. So, my eyes and ears infiltrated your vessel, your cities, and they discovered a trail that led back to one of your worlds. A trail that ended with a burned monkey. In your grasp by his knowledge or without his knowledge? Um, I need a little clarity on that. How the information was reaching his agents, the burned monkey himself did not even okay. know. But based on the units involved and other details, it was clear. No monkey in real space could have gathered such specifics about raid complements and objectives. No, it was inconceivable. The information was being fed to you by my own kind, and I knew who. Irimaris Aziriesh, Archon of the Reaving Tempest, my former mistress. A cowardly bitch who punishes anyone who threatens her grip on power. I knew that to win a war against her, I would need the support of the Reaving Tempest's patron, the Cabal of the Black Heart. So I allied with Nazrake, who presided over the trial. I promised him that Irimaris would be humiliated. I promised him evidence. A lowly monkey that would disgrace Irimaris in the eyes of the Archons. For that performance, I needed you. Okay, so by my understanding, Yermaris and Mirazhai are basically having sort of like almost a internal war with each other. And she set him up while he was trying to set her up. So she set him up by giving information to us, it sounds like. And then she, then he needed us to be an earpiece to help him embarrass her, but that's not how it worked out. So you have spies aboard my ship? 
Of course. If I'm not mistaken, you met the Infiltrator yourself. A Cabalite who left a lava from Tavantius in one of the Monkey. Or did you never work out the reason for the treachery during the raid on your ship so long ago now? Hmm. Then there is no need for me to mention the sleeper agents hidden on your worlds. A Cabalite who left a larva from Trevantius in one of the monkey. So that was the guy that we met on the ship during the expl- the, like when- when we disarmed the bomb? Okay. What agreement did you make with Nor Nosrakai? Overthrowing an Archon is far from easy, even one who has already tarnished her reputation. Every member of a Cabal has their supporters, and Irimaris is no exception. Nazrake promised me a sham trial in the Obsidian Court with a predetermined outcome. Irimaris should have been convicted and dethroned. I was supposed to take her place and turn the Reaving Tempest into a loyal vassal of the Black Heart. Nazrake was supposed to be the axe that fell on her neck, but it fell on mine instead. It was devious and worthy of praise, but why? A secret pact with the Rimaris, or is there another reason? I will tear the answer from his throat along with his final breath. It must be said that Nazrake did not have to try very hard to turn the court against me. Not after the stunt you pulled before the assembled Archons. The Tribunal. What was that about? I was being tried by the Inquisitor, and Heinrichs and Theodora were there. Why? Who? I have no idea what you saw in your stupor. The homunculus's creature does not elicit specific images. It muddles your mind, forcing it to paint suitable pictures evoking confusion or fear. Neither Devantius nor I care about fussy monkey rituals. The lava must have created a suitable environment for you. One in which you would be more willing to answer my questions in the Obsidian Court. Okay, and what were you and Tazara doing in my protectorate? What do any of my kind do in real space? We were reaping. Kamara was clamoring for meat. The Dark City had suffered losses in the latest disjunction. We needed sources of sweet pain to prime its minds and bodies. When the Archon bade my Cabal collect the harvest from the region, I did not suspect that it would turn into this Game between you and me. You and your Liette conspiring together, how did that come about? Conspiring? <laughs> no, no. There was no plot between us. She merely rushed to my bait. At first, I planned to use the one you trusted, the burned monkey with whom we had spent long, long hours awaiting your arrival. But my cousin was so swift. Afterward, she tracked down the monkey, killed him, and took the device that he had been using to contact me. So she killed Scalander? I think I remember her mentioning that, but I didn't... I can't remember if I pieced it together that she killed Scalander. I planted the first poison seeds in her soul back at our first meeting. I dropped a hint that I knew what had become of her world. I lured her in and left her with you. Time took care of the rest. That and an unpleasant discovery aboard your own ship. Um... He already said, though, that he, that the burned... Scalander wasn't the guy. He was using other people beyond Scalander. So the person who had direct contact with Mirazhai wasn't Scalander. It was his other informants, was it not? 
I feel like they're telling me two different things. Was Scalander directly in contact with Miraz High or not? And was the monkey that she killed someone beyond Scalander or Scalander himself? I did not ask her to hand you a little over bit lost. to me. No, doing that would have made my poor cousin doubt herself even more than she was already. I simply told her where to seek out the traces of her craft world and the answers to her questions. A favor for a kinswoman, nothing more. And then I made ready for your arrival. For the only way she would reach that place was with you. All right, so the implication is that he did betray us. Based on this dialogue right here, I cannot believe that Achilles betrayed humanity. All right, I'm not gonna go through the dialogue again to see how I misunderstood, but. When a monkey is left alone with me and my art of pain, I plunge them into a deep well of suffering from which they will do anything to escape. Your kind have fragile souls. Your convictions and principles are a delusion that lends a mirage of meaning to your lives. Achilles and I had plenty of time alone together before your arrival. When he went out to meet you, he was already mine. I bought his loyalty with a promise. To never touch his body or his mind ever again. Okay. What do you know about Yurliet's craft world? I know it exists. I know that my cabal found it, helpless and stationary, unable to protect its sons and daughters. I know that Iliot's kin began showing up as prisoners in the Reaving Tempest Spire, where they were fonts of exquisite, delightful pain. I spent too much time beyond the limits of our home to learn more than that. But that was enough to tempt Iliot with false hope. I don't... I'm assuming that he can be a long-term companion. I don't think he's going to be in our playthrough. I think that the playthrough that we're doing... I don't trust this guy. Like, in what universe can we turn him around? You know what I mean? Like... Oh, this is awful. You need to tell her the truth now. We've already had words. I have no reason to conceal the truth now. Iliad has outlived her usefulness to me. Watching her face as she learned the truth was priceless. Yeah, oh man, that he's, so, he's an awful person. He can't be a permanent part of our team. Um, he only gets to be a part of our team until he helps us get out of here. <laughs> and then this dude is either dead or just booted <laughs> I don't know how I don't I'm, I'm like struggling to to see any way they could redeem this man in my eyes what were those creatures with you when you captured me mandrakes a foul breed that lurks in the bowels of Camorra their ability to find paths through the shadows was put to good use. I promised them forbidden trophies from the Reaving Tempest's coffers once I am Archon. <clears throat> okay, you made a promise to the Mandrakes that you cannot keep. Aren't you afraid of retribution? <laughs> Let them come for what they're owed. They will regret it. Despite his self-assured words, concern brings a furrow to Marazai's brow. The theft of Rykad's son, was that your doing? Did you not hear me when I answered you the first time? I do not like to repeat myself. Um, I don't remember what you said, so I would love it if you repeated yourself because my memory is terrible and I can't comprehend what I read like three minutes ago. So, please? Did he or didn't he? <laughs> I honestly don't remember. Did he actually answer that somewhere in this? Okay, whatever. That is and enough for now. What else do you need? I, I must need more coffee or something today. And what else do you need? Okay. What happened to you after the trial? Oh, great. Not voice. I was handed over to the witch cult to do with as they wished. 
First, they made me fight the dregs in the arena, and then, once they had had their fill of my debasement, I was granted entry into the bloodstained proselytes. Okay. What did you hope to gain? The continuation of my existence. When I lost my standing, I became fair game for anyone tempted by the prospect of slaying a disgraced cavalite. For vengeance or just for the pleasure of the kill. In Kamora alone, Drakari is a target. My talents may be prodigious, but I held no illusions about my chances. So you did not find much favor among the witches, it seems. You cannot hope to understand the intricacies of Kamora and how it is structured. We are all each other's allies and worst enemies here. Towers of strength and duplicitous traitors both. The cults have always been half a step below the cabals in the hierarchy. And the witches relished the chance to abuse someone who once looked down on them. If our conversation is finished... When given the chance to join me, you took it readily. That surprised me. I had no intention of ending my days playing the role of meat in the arena. And then you... You blithely offered me an alliance after what I'd done to you. Why? I require help to escape from Kimura. So our interests align. For now. For now. <laughs> I don't I don't like this guy. Tell me about Kimura. The Dark City is the bastion of the Drukari. The most magnificent of all our strongholds. The Cabals, Witch Cults, and the Incubi inhabit the place, with swarms of scourges flying overhead and a myriad of misfits and horrors, including the covens of the Hemunculi wallowing underfoot. Which do you want to know about? Tell me about the Hemunculi covens. Artists of the flesh who prefer to hide away in their laboratories and create nightmares from the materials their servants supply. Engines of pain, grotesques, racks, all are the fruits of their subtle craft. Okay, and you're from the Drukari Cabal, correct? The Cabals are the foundation upon which rests the power of the one who rules Kamara, as Drubai Vect. Whether it is a mob of berserkers or an organized cartel, their essence is the same. An army of killers, ready to ravage entire worlds at the behest of their leaders. Or to rip out the throats of a neighboring cabal in a war declared by the Archons. Okay, hey, witch cults. What more do you need to know that you have not already beheld with your own eyes? They are the mistresses of the arenas, and they are the gladiators who feed the audience in their ravenous agony with exquisite spectacles. Cults often travel to real space on the Cabal's raids to revel in the pain and to capture fresh meat for their arenas. Incubi? The aloof Incubi. They dedicate their lives to the art of killing, so much so that they do not plot or chase after delicious torment. All their hatred and longing for suffering are channeled toward perfecting their skill. And scourges. Winged Drukari, who have chosen to go through an agonizing process to become such a monstrosity. Okay. They escort raiding ships and inflict the first strike on the enemy. In Kamora, these creatures huddled in flocks so that they do not fall victim to the more formidable of their kin. Okay, so they are like a subgroup of Drukari. Gotcha. That will do. Um, any thoughts on how we can escape this place? On a mountain of bodies, bathing in our enemies' tears and blood. Do not deceive yourself by thinking we will escape this place alive without violence. I, for one, hope that there will be plenty of it. But there is one unfortunate detail. An Arabenian has stepped into your path. One of Kegarak's tribe, who lurk in the tangle of the webway. I have heard them called Harlequins in your tongue. The one that appeared in the Obsidian Court is the most dangerous and unpredictable of all. 
I'm beginning to think that his visit is a sign that the events unfolding around us have not been left to chance. Perhaps they are the result of interference at the behest of the highest authority. I'm interested to see how all of this is going to tie together, because, like, I feel like whoever the big bad is, which might be that Urs Ursulon, or whatever that guy was that visited us um, on Kiava Gamma in our head, he might be the, the main big bad, but we, we have very little details about how all of this comes together, but I'm interested to see how it, it weaves together. Do not keep me waiting too long. My weapon is tired of languishing in its sheath. Because the Harlequin is helping us in in some small ways, and I'm, w I'm wondering if he's like an agent of this big bad, and I'm not sure what the purpose would be. I don't know. The connective tissue isn't quite there for me yet, but it could be interesting how it does tie together. Um, all right. You came back from the dark, Ellen Tark? Unharmed. Although your Liette's sharp features remain the same, the deep shadows around her eyes and her listless gaze give her the appearance of a living corpse. The Eldari looks withered, haunted, despondent. But when you approach, the relentlessness in her eyes is replaced with a faint glimmer of hope. How are you? My body has already healed. The wounds of the soul will heal one day too. For suffering is a part of our life, not unlike love and fear and the desire to learn. The paths help the children of Asurion to endure any spiritual upheaval. And you, Ellen Tark, did not allow me to stray from mine. For this, I am grateful. And yet, neither rest nor healing solves, or even our reconciliation can soothe the savage turmoil in my soul, Elantark. Kruderak is lost, and the bud of truth never opened before me. What happened to my kinsmen? What happened to my world? And why did the Dark Cousin tell me less than he knew? There is a roiling darkness in your Liet's emerald eyes that seem to search the very bottom of your soul. What happened to you after the trial? I was meant to share your fate, Ellen Tuck, and vanish in the Dark City's rotting underbelly. But the Fleshmaster gave a different order. His twisted mind was beset by a question. Could a child of Asurion be saved from the gaze of she who thirsts with intense re-education? By replacing the influence of my spirit stone with the heady tang of pain that nourishes the followers of the Dark Ways, I donned the Executioner's mantle. They allowed me to keep my spirit stone in exchange for the suffering of others. I survived, prayed for Asurion's mercy, and hoped to escape before the stone cracked under the torrent of pain and terror assaulting my soul. Before the experiment was complete. It's really dark. I want to know why you did it. Everything from beginning to end. I tried to learn to trust you, Ellen Tuck. Whatever your motives, you did not turn away from me. And you helped me search for my kin. But despair ate at me from within. The human journeys through the realm of she who thirsts left my soul drained. And our attempts to save the children of Kruderak crumbled to nothing in the unending coldness of the dark cosmos. And even when I beheld a piece of Kruderak in your chambers, I wanted to believe you had nothing to do with it. I wanted to, but I succumbed to emotion. To fear, to hopelessness, to grief. I was afraid that Silent Thrash would find me before I found the truth. Which is why I try to find my dark cousin on the day he attacked Argonus. I used the commotion to slip away unnoticed and wandered the streets like a shadow in search of its owner. My efforts were futile. 
I returned to the palace in confusion. I waited for my fresh wounds to stop aching, and for the watchfulness of the surrounding monkey to fade like the mist on an autumn morning. But still, I had my doubts. Perhaps, I thought, I should discuss it openly with you. That monkey Achilles. There was something wrong about him. He kept disappearing at night, so one day I followed him. Achilles was contacting Marajai, using an artifact that transmitted his master's orders. That is how I learned that the burnt monkey was about to betray you. Which meant my only chance to discover the fate of my homeworld was about to slip through my fingers. I could not wait any longer. I killed Achilles, took the artifact, and demanded answers from Marajai. He hinted at where I could go to look for the truth. You know what happened next. God, finally somebody spoke his name out loud. Marajai. Okay, let's see if I can remember to pronounce that correctly now. Marajai. 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 Um, I don't know why this is a thing. She literally just said she did. Did you kill Achilles? My words will hardly console you, Ellen Tuck. But I killed the traitor. I fear the Dark Ones left too many scars on his fragile soul. Your loyal monkey broke, so I gifted him a swift death, free from the shame of betrayal. Hmm. Okay, well, enough about that. A quiet sigh of relief is her only reply. Yeah, I didn't like any of the other options, so... What do you know about this place? Kamora. This city grinds down the will of the strong and torments any who get tangled in its dark web. The fools are the first to die, and the shrewd perish regardless. I have never been here before. But few children of Assyrian manage to escape the Dark City without surrendering a part of their soul. So what is it that you wish to know? Do you know how we can get out of here? The Dark City is pierced by millions of spires, and a webway gate may be hidden in any of them. It is the only way out of this place, and an impassable obstacle to any who do not know how to operate it. I know, and will help you should you so desire. Okay, so if we can get into a spire with a webway, she knows how to activate it. Um, what about cities other than Kimura? There are no other cities, Elantark. The Dark City has no bounds. It is a tangle of countless nightmare domains subject to a single ruler. An endless amalgamation of ever-changing and immutable dimensions. You cannot grasp its tenebrous grandeur, for even my life will not be long enough to visit all corners of the Dark City and the realms that border it. But it hardly matters where you go, for death lurks on every corner. Who rules the Dark City? An ancient and powerful Drukhari named Estrubael Vect. The supreme overlord of the Cabal of the Black Heart, who reigns over all of the Drakari with an iron fist. My dark kin consider him to be a living god. Much like your emperor on the Golden Throne, Fact sits upon a throne of darkness and suffering that keeps Kamora's disparate clans from disintegrating. I would not want to meet him if I were you, Alan Tuck. But, do I have the answers that you seek? Gather your strength. There are more trials yet to come. Alan Tuck. I promised that I would no longer hide my worries behind an icy wall of pride and doubt. And so I want to explain myself. But, are you willing to hear me out? Yes, let's get an explanation. Not here. The words of my truth are intended only for your ears, Ellen Tuck. A 
Okay. Um, is she invisible right now? Cool. Okay. <laughs> Analog vernacular, I... Your Liet's usual pride and arrogance give way to awkwardness and confusion. This is my first time ever having to explain myself like this, but you, more than anyone, deserve to know the truth. I understand how unworthy I am in your eyes. This may sound like a ridiculous excuse, but I did not want to betray you, vernacular. I only wished to learn the truth about Kruderak's demise and find my kin. And when I saw the shard of my world in your dwelling, that trophy mounted on the wall, I was beside myself with fear and rage. And when my dark cousin whispered in my ear that he knew the answers to my questions, I made a mistake. I trusted my kin, and fearing that you might refuse me if you knew where I had been getting my orders from, I simply asked you to direct your ship to the particular system. Did I trust Mirage... I already forgot how to pronounce this. Mirage I? No, of course not. I thought he spoke of my kin's location to crush my soul. That he wanted me to go there and find only death instead of them. Instead of them. But hope, hope for the better, prevailed over my faith in you, Ellen Talk. Nearly at size awkwardly, avoiding your gaze. Filled with hope, the thought never even crossed my mind that this single thread forever slipping from my grasp would lead us to the very heart of the Dark City. I am sorry, Vernacular, and I wanted you to know that. Your faith in me? Did I hear that right? Yerliat looks you straight in the eye. The time I spent with you, our conversations, the glow of your soul that only I can see. Yes, faith. With you, I... She stammers at a loss for words. I already told you that I know nothing about the shard. That trophy belonged to Theodora, my pre predecessor. So you are not the one to blame for the destruction of Kruderok, but your blood is? Yerliat purses her thin lips. No, I will not condemn you and your blood. No more. My accusations have already cost us too much. I have always been honest with you, Yerliet. You, however, lied to me from the start. She lowers her head in shame. There is indisputable truth to your words. I should have realized sooner that you were worthy of more than what I offered you. You are worthy of my trust. Forgive me my arrogance, vernacular. I understand why you did that, and I forgive you. Her eyes widen in surprise. I give you my word, Vernacular. I will never betray your trust ever again. You have shown great compassion by accepting, accepting me and forgiving my deed. I do not know if I would have been able to do the same. It pains me to know the hardships you have had to endure because of me, and you still suffer in this cursed arena, in this cursed city. I also nearly at pauses as if hesitant to continue. My soul is crushed, Ellen Talk. The loss of Kruderok, the horrors of Kimura, and the Drukhari's attempts to re-educate me. Have fully paid, I have fully paid the price. I have lost my path and can no longer meditate. Really? My body and my soul know no peace now, and that means that she who thirsts will soon turn her predatory gaze on me. You are unable to meditate? Can that happen? I have heard stories that Eldari unable to reach their inner world because of anguish or madness, and every story had a tragic ending. All right. I mean, you're just in a... You're, I feel like you've found yourself into depression or something. Like, you can get this back, girl. How are you going to regain your powers now? I... I do not know. Sincere hopelessness rings in your Liet's voice. Yeah, we tried that once and she was not happy about it. I mean, by saying this, maybe she'll change her mind? I don't know. Let's go with four. I like four. I cannot help with meditation, but I am prepared to stay with you and share the silence. That way you will be able to forget about the horrors of Kimura, if only for a little while. She freezes for a second, then gestures for you to take a seat nearby. We had a sing on Kruderak. In silence you can hear a heartbeat, the music of the soul trying to burst out. Please share this wordless song with me, vernacular, and may it bring, bring peace to us both. Okay. okay. 
hold on, let's look over here first. Anything new over here? Okay, we'll talk to you in a minute, Argenta. Gruesome blow was caved in. Oh, that's the guy we tried to do Medicaid on before and failed. Alright, we talk to you, we talk to you, we talk to you. Alright, Argenta. Rogue trader. Being reunited with the Emperor's Chosen is a balm to my soul. We need to find a way out of here. We do. And I swear to fight for that end. And not to lose hope, even... Even when deceit... Corruption and treachery surround us on all sides. Have you managed to learn anything about this place? I have made no attempt to do so. What need do I have to know of the depravity <laughs> of the enemies of humanity? When all okay. I want is to burn it all in pure, raging flame. I already know all I need to. This place is evil. But there are servants of the Emperor here worthy of salvation. All right, Argenta, you do you, you know. Sometimes, sometimes knowledge can uh, help you in your purging fire. <laughs> sometimes knowledge is necessary to have a good plan. Let's put it that way, Argenta. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you should try a little bit. <laughs> May Terra's light be with you, Rogue Trader. Oh, I love her anyway. <laughs> oh, she's just a big, dumb, shooty girl, I guess. <laughs> Oh, I don't know why I got a kick out of that. Oh, Mirazai can join us. Okay. We're gonna... We don't get any rest. I think we're gonna keep our... Injuries, it looks like. Okay, I'm guessing Mirazai is gonna be melee based. Seemed like he was a dual wielder. Blade dual wielder. Hopefully they have some of his level. Like if if they start me on like tree one, like three levels in. Oh boy. <laughs> what level are you at? Okay, they put you at 29. Okay, good, good. Um. Yeah, let's see. Is this a bug? Like, most of our party members just have nothing in these. Is that normal? Hmm. Alright, I have no idea what your build actually looks like. Looks like you're an assassin, though. Checks out. Um, do you have dual wielding? Let's see. So we have an ability here we can take. You have Dance Macabre. Up to four cells. Okay, elusive shadow. Man, it's too bad that only lasts until the end of their turn. Okay, poised to strike. That's the free attack one, right? Let's do poise to strike. Okay, you do have dual weapon combat. 57, it's not a ton, but you're a dodge tank, so HP is not the biggest necessary thing for you. Movement as a melee unit would be good, so that's an option. You've already got Nimble. You'll probably be able to get that soon anyway. Well, actually, do we know? 
Okay, none of these are locked. So yes, you will be able to. Okay, this is a regular talent, so we shouldn't take a common here, probably. We'll take outsmart. Okay, what are you good at? Demolition and athletics. Lorzinos. Okay, this is another talent, not a common. Zero AP for first assassin ability. Oh, see, why didn't it tell me which ones were locked? I, I made that decision based on what I looked at. That's so rude. That's so rude. If I preview it, show me which ones are locked, you dummies. God damn it. All right, well, strength for damage, I guess. I was going for that bonus. All right, this is a common talent, so here we'll get our weapon skill up. How about that? Nope, that one's locked too. Cool. Strength then. Boom. It's just straight strength. There we go. I'm not mad. You're mad. <laughs> All right. I don't even know if I want to give him gear because I don't want him to stay in the party and I don't know if he'll get kicked out in some weird way or what, but um, okay. They need more type sorting, like where blades go together. Uh, they should put like, I don't know that this type sorting doesn't make sense in weapons to me. Like, these should be, like, all swords should be together, all bolters should be together, that sort of deal. Um, this is just untenable. <laughs> Alright, you've got an 18 to 25. For now, oh, that's a two-handed shit. Now I'm never going to find that one again. <laughs> God damn it. It's one of these? Yeah, it's one of these. Oh yeah, severed hand. Okay, bleeding, venomous slash, this one has a rending strike, deals an additional agility bonus divided by two damage for each common negative effect on them. Eh, I don't know. Too many modifiers on that. <laughs> I think these are all two-handed. That's a one-handed.
All right, armor. I'm guessing you probably want to be in light. You've got a 30%er right now. 40%er light. Okay, that's an easy upgrade there. 55 medium. Now we'll keep the light. Okay, 15% dodge if the wearer's agility is more than 65, which it totally is. You have really high agility. True dodge tank right here. How much do I want to gear you up? I'm assuming if we ended up having to fight each other at the end here, like in an escape or something, we'd be able to loot him afterwards, but... I'm not going to give you any other stuff right now until we get our other party members fitted out with their regular stuff. Yeah, okay. We can give you... Some consumables, though. You don't have Medicaid. Okay, I'm gonna do a full lap, see if there's anybody we can interact with. And then I guess we're gonna go back into the opera and hope. Rise to the top. We should deal with this. I'll get left in the dust. Okay, 74 Medicaid. Compared to naval service, that was barely a challenge. A Reaver's tendon. Enhanced with synthetic thread, 10 times more resilient than regular tissue, capable of withstanding tremendous strain during the fight. I wonder what all those are going to be for. Keep your wits about you. Always keep your eye on the price. Okay, not seeing any like named characters or anything we need to talk to. Out is there here. money to be made? Okay, that is a full round. All right, let's go back to I the opera. Have a backup plan. And hope we can do something here. Meat. Okay, we could attack him. Rise to the top. Or get left in the dust. All right, last time we came and talked to this guy, it seemed like we had only one choice, which was to kiss his freaking ass, which I hate, but it might be what we have to do in order to progress. He implied that, like, we could get Cassia and Heinrichs, but I don't know how. <laughs> oh, did this open up? I don't think that was connected before. Hello? Oh, that's up here. Okay. Whoops. All turned around. Um, okay. So maybe this is where we're going then. I always keep my options open. The thick walls of this container were clearly designed to hold something extremely dangerous. Oh, is Cassia in here? Oh, 
it is Cassia. She, they were keeping her in that? That's so rude. I'm gonna kill these guys. <gasps> Oh my god. I feel, at last, I, I feel something. You see horror and confusion in Cassia's wide open eyes. Her face, neck, and hands are gruesomely scratched and sticky. Blood is dripping from the tips of her claw like fingernail. Oh, I'm gonna murder all these people. <laughs> Why are there so many of you at once? Red, black, violet, scarlet, yellow, dark maroon. Away with you. Stop swarming my thoughts. Mirajai recoils, letting out a frenzied hiss. Should have killed this thing back then. It's a foul gateway of silent thresh. Foul gateway. Oh, because she's a. Yeah, she's. Her ties to the warp. Gotcha. Cassia clutches her head again, this time covering her third eye, but you can already feel the breath of the warp coming from its gaze. Vernacular, I, I cannot control it. The powers flowing through Cassia's fragile body make your head swim and your hair stand on end. Your body is burning as if you have been doused with a vat of molten plastil, and your head is teeming with strange whispers, shadows, voices. Every breath is a struggle as though something is scratching at your insides, trying to claw its way out of your chest. Your gorge rises. You have survived being exposed to the navigator's open eye, but will your body and mind hold if it occurs again? Okay, damage taken. He took a bunch. I wonder if he has a weakness to... Do you have an extra weakness to, um, warp? Irlia desperately clutches the spirit stone on her chest. Elentok, hurry. She who thirsts is looking through the three eyes of this monkey looking at us. Oh, really? That's bad. So that was very literal coming from Mirajai. Okay, 100% on that. Of course, we've seen it lie to us before. Okay, smile through the paint. All is well, my lady. You can defeat this. I shall stay by your side and help however I can. Cassia struggles to focus her eyes on you. An unfamiliar expression is imprinted on her pale, gaunt face, one that is stern, confident, and imperious. It is the same expression you saw on Theodora von Valencius' face when you first met her. You do not even believe your own words. Look at me. Look. I am an abomination, a monster, and you know what must be done with monsters. An eerie chill runs down the entire length of your body. It is a feeling you forgot, but recollection swiftly follows. Someone else's turmoil and emotions and a will that is not your own. The, this crushing wave is about to consume you. Ooh. Okay. That was only a 75 as well. A haze of anger, despair, and fear smothers you like a burial shroud. But this is not the first time you have had to deal with a surge of foreign emotions assailing your mind. You wish you would die here and now. No. You wish you had never been born in the first place. You summon your will and push these thoughts away, as though fending off a sword thrust, and Cassia's feelings dissipate before they can latch onto you. Very nice. Okay. Zero percent on that one. Wow. Okay, well, we're good at this, so which one do we like more? Alright. This one's more romantic, and this is our lady. This is our... This is our mer queen, so... Our fish queen. Let's go. For all those years, fear and loneliness were all you knew. Not anymore. Don't you dare wish death upon yourself. When I am with you, I will strive to, alle to alleviate your every sorrow. Do not speak of such things, do you hear me? Cassia digs her sharp nails into her head, and rivulets of blood turn her hair from white to crimson. I could have killed you when we first met. I could have unwittingly robbed you of reason on your ship. It is my fault you were attacked in your own palace, and now... Her eyes are brimming with red tears as she looks at you with passion and tenderness. I cannot endanger you any longer, vernacular. I will not let you suffer. Cassia concentrates, determined to bring her powers under control until her body jolts as if electrocuted. You know, when darkness envelops you, it takes everything away, leaving no sounds, no smells, no solid footing. Darkness devours every color that tries to make its way in. Every color I tried to create inside. Darkness is withering, it swallows the colors. It chews and consumes. But when despair had overtaken me completely, I could sense I was not alone in that darkness. Someone else was with me. Someone intangible, cold, and colorless. 
and that realization ravaged my sanity all the more. When the capsule opened, my mind was drowned in grimy shades of crimson and umber and black, and... And I am going barmy, analog vernacular. I thought I could harness this power, but now you must end this for my sake, for your own, and for that of all that we have shared. If you do this, I, I shan't object at all. Cassia closes her eyes, unable to bring herself to meet your gaze. So is there some kind of, um... Are they implying that, like, some of her power from maybe her third eye is actually tied directly to Silent Thresh? Or is it just, or is Silent Thresh just taking advantage of a moment because she's just tied to the warp? Her tremors subside for a brief moment like a resigned victim going still in anticipation of the Executioner's axe. Frigid heaviness hangs in the air. Your entire being implores you to run. Quickly. Now. <laughs> okay. Hold her and kiss her, and then your head will explode or some shit. Don't even think of leaving me, Cassia. I won't let you go. Cassia freezes, startled by your touch, and your lips join together in a bittersweet kiss that tastes of blood and tears. And fish. You see, <laughs> you, see <t> you see terror in her wide open eyes, but then her body relaxes, and her eyes close along with her navigator's eye. She reciprocates slowly, uncertainly, gently. Please no more, I cannot breathe, I fear I may faint. Okay, we'll just, we'll, we'll hold her close. I feared that if I were to let you go, you might want to disappear again, my lady. No, I, I shan't leave, I promise. Cassie is not trembling anymore. Instead, she clings to your chest and rests her head on your shoulder. You can feel her heart pounding in a measured, sw uh, sweet and calm rhythm. Oh, vernacular. Yeah, we gotta lean into uh, her, her favorite romance novels. <laughs> yeah, this, this is all Regency. Regency uh, romance shit right here. Taking an awkward, awkward step back, Cassia gingerly covers her third eye, as if afraid that she might unleash her soul's tempestuous powers upon you once more. You risk your life to save me. For a rogue traitor, the ruler of a great dynasty, it was utter lunacy. It was irresponsible. Her brow furrows indignantly, but her eyes are full of pain and despair. Your protectorate, your billions of subjects, they could have lost their sovereign in the blink of an eye, yet you... What were you even thinking? My only thought was to save you. What could you possibly see in someone like me? What, you mean my fish queen? I mean, look at those beautiful gills, girl. Look at those claws, baby. Who wouldn't be into that, right? Am I right? Am I right, commenters? You all know you're into it, okay? Cassie's voice is almost a whisper. She looks away. Yeah, dude, we, we have to lean into, like, the most absurd, like, Regency romance novel stuff. Like, this girl grew up with nothing but books. This is what she's into. I do not know, but I know I cannot hope to see the light in my days ever again without you. Yes, I can see it in your colors, your soft, warm hues, and the bright flashes whenever you look at me, as you are doing right now. I feel the same when I am with you, and I am afraid that I might grow dependent on these feelings. The colors of bliss are so very fleeting. She gives you an affectionate look and a timid smile. Reunion, baby. All right, she's back with us. I think we've got two level ups for her. And then we also need to outfit her with gear. Okay, fellowship could be good. Let's see. No reason to do weapon or ballistic. Toughness, not as important. Maybe we should do fellowship. Okay, this is a talent, not a common. Using a stratagem on a rear area also makes the allies in that area the enemy's lowest priority targets. 
Yeah, that one could be good. Um, hold on. Let's go to our starred ones. We took to improvised. Plus three deflection against just melee hits, though. Okay, extra perception and agility if they're in the same area as the Grand Strategist. Ooh, the sniping zone. Okay. Every enemy killed in the front line area increases all bonuses of combat tactics area by plus one until the end of combat. First stratagem used in a turn can be used a second time for zero AP. Okay, and then these are a lot of common ones. I think I'm going to do sniping zone. So rear specifically will get a bonus to critical hit chance. So we just give that to yearly yet every time. Yeah. Okay. And then a common talent after that. Um, which ones were marked? Tonicity was. What was the other one? Plus two perception until the end of combat. Yeah, that that one's pretty good. I think that's probably one of the other ones that was marked. Ooh, enemies affected by the navigator's abilities suffer a stacking minus 10 penalty to the next resistance test. I think we had that one marked as well. So yeah, that'll, I think that one pairs really well with her movement abilities. And uh, bringing down Veil Degradation could be good too, but we're not really dealing with that too much because Heinrichs isn't using Veil stuff that often. And she doesn't increase Veil, so... Okay, let's do Open to the Warp. Okay. All right, Cassia, let's get you outfitted. Oh yeah, I forgot we picked up some new stuff. In fact, let's look at that real quick. Um, oldest to newest. Um, yeah, some of this gear. Whenever the wearer uses combat locus, the benefits of the targeted zone are multiplied by four instead of being doubled. I don't even know if we have that ability. At the beginning of the holder's turn, all enemies in a three cell radius gain plus one stack of bleeding for each common effect on this enemy. Consumable item, plus two movement and 20% dodge. Performs a single shot ranged attack from any cover. This attack gains percentage armor penetration. Damn, you can't wear that. How about you though? Um, how does it compare to what you've got? Whenever the wearer performs a heroic act, they recover all their wounds and gain plus two AP this turn. I wonder if this boots of victory were working improperly. Remember that time when I was wondering why Argenta got her HP back? I'm wondering if this triggered on her instead of on him. Or maybe it's the target of the heroic act and they just wrote it wrong. And that's why she gained her HP back. If that's how it works, that'd be really good, actually. But I'm not sure that's how that works. Maybe we'll have to test that out. See if when he uses a heroic act to give somebody else a turn, will they get their HP and a bonus to plus two AP. And then we'll, we'll be able to know. Whenever the wearer hits with a ranged weapon, Within melee range, one stack of perplexed, nah. Each time the wearer dodges a melee attack, they gain plus percent critical hit chance until the end of their next turn. I feel like that would be better on Heinrichs than on Abelard. So something to consider. Okay, but anyways, we looked at our new. Let's go back to type.
I think that was your main one. The one that um, did not get rid of your cooldown for your first navigator power. Yeah, that's so good, man. I don't know if she's ever going to find a, st a staff we like more than that. And I'm guessing we probably had that one in your secondary. Infusing nine. Maybe that one's better. Hmm. Okay, armor. Now, I think there was a light armor that was doing something specific for navigators, but maybe I'm misremembering that. Dodge and agility. Extra dodge. Intelligence bonus. So someone with high intelligence that's... Um, does Heinrich have high intelligence? That one might be for him. Was he using medium armor, though? Okay, 35. 30. With dodge. So do we want the 30 with dodge, or do we want this 35? So our dodge is 133% right now. 120. Yeah, I think we want this one. A little bit less armor, but um, our dodge is built high, so lean into that. Okay. All right, I may pause for this one specifically um, as we find each of these other pieces of gear. So I'll be back in a minute. All right, I'm back. So we got her her hood here for her navigator powers. Um, it does hit her weapon skill and ballistic skill, but she never uses that. So that extra 15% um, percent damage is awesome. And a bonus to willpower, awesome. All right, she's got that. She's got plus 10 bonus to awareness because she's our main awareness person. Plus five toughness of intelligence is less than 35. There wasn't really a good amulet for her, to be honest with you. Um, every time more than two targets are damaged by the wielder's area attack, the wielder gains plus resolve momentum. So I'm guessing that that means... Uh, this is assuming that her navigator abilities and her lidless stare are considered area attacks. In fact, only the lid, uh, lidless stare might be the only one that actually counts for that, but still... Every time the wearer deals damage, the target's weapon skill and ballistic skill is reduced by minus five for two rounds, stacks up to three times. So she can stack this pretty quickly because she's going to be hitting a lot of people with damage. And if that actually stacks properly, then we're going to be... She's also just became a massive debuffer. So um, each enemy killed by the wearer's area attacks increases damage of the wearer by 3% until the end of combat. So if we find out that this, like her things don't count as area attacks, the other option for this would be to give her just some extra dodge with the chameleon cloak. But for now, assuming that that's working as I think it is, then that should be good. Um, whenever the wearer uses the navigator power, they gain a plus 15% dodge until the end of the round stacks. So that'll be huge for her. So yeah, her dodge is gonna be good and getting better. And uh, hopefully if these area attacks work the way I think, then we'll be able to take some bonuses from this and from this as well. But like I said, um, her navigator powers may not count as attacks because it's only a secondary ability that gives it um, damage. But I think this one should count as an area attack. So at the very least, this one should get those bonuses. All right. Um, we are way over time, so I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. Thank you all for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next episode. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.
I'd like to give a very special shout out to my patron supporters, Darren York, ZTD, Knife Namase, Kyle the Monarch, Chris Murphy, JW, Quinless, Vlada101, Andy Ford, Bruce Wizzle, Black Mamba90, Eureka Gecko, A Happy Fat Panda, Turkeyfoot27, Pedo Kuto, Shadow Raven, Anna Kate the Great, The Blue Electric Cat, Emily Kuzanoa, Philip Dowerty, and Nadia N. If you would also like to join this tier or any others, check out my memberships or my Patreon in the description down below.